The Anchor Solix F2000 is a feature-packed portable power station that finds a lot of uses in everyday life. But if, like many people, you're considering hitting the road in a converted van, a bus, or an RV, the Anchor Solix F2000 is right at home, powering your life there as well. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a couple of different install options, a few different panel options for powering this rig, and show you a couple of other products you might find handy as you are planning an install in this rig yourself. We'll dive into the specs and features of the Solix F2000 that make it a good fit, show you how to pick out a third-party panel that'll play nice with it, and make sure that you can get every last penny out of your investment in your Anchor Solix F2000. The first of the two installation methods that we're going to be covering for the Anchor Solix F2000 is a small one. This would be ideal for a van, a small RV, or even a tow-behind cargo trailer that you use for work. We won't be using the expansion battery or a large, rigid solar panel. Instead, we'll be focusing on the Anchor brand solar panel, and I'll give you some considerations if you're looking for a smaller, perhaps also a flexible, third-party solar panel option as well. We'll be using cables that are all prefabricated, so you don't have to do any complicated splicing and we'll talk about some design parameters for your interior space They'll help make sure that you get full functionality out of the Solix once it's installed. If you're living and working in a small space, having extension cords and cables everywhere is a real drag. And so Anchor makes it really easy by giving you a lot of output options. We've got four standard 120 volt AC plugs on the front here. We've got a 30 amp plug on the front. We've got two automotive style 12 volt plugs and then a host of USB-C and conventional USB charging ports on the front. If you're building this into a smaller rig, I would encourage you to put it in a space where all of this remains accessible so you don't have to be running cables all over your rig. Really keeps things clean. And if it's accessible, that means you can pull it out for easy access when you want to take it with you onto the job site or maybe from where you parked your van to a sweet campsite down by the river. We've covered all the ways to get power out of your Solix F2000. Let's talk about how you can get power back in. The first is shore power charging. This is the simplest. Simply plug the cord in the back of this. You can run an extension cord out to your rig and plug this into it, or you can buy a power inlet that you install in the side of your vehicle that actually has a receptacle on the opposite side so you can have a nice weatherproof watertight connection when you're parked. Now, when you're driving, it's a different story. On the back of the Solix F2000, we have an XT60 input. This is your primary DC input, and you can use the included adapter, this one here, which has the common automotive cigarette style on one end and an XT60 on the other. You plug this into here, and the cable is quite long, long enough to reach your charging port in your vehicle, and that will give you up to 10 amps or 120 watts of DC charging whenever the vehicle is running. Now, everybody's favorite option, and probably the reason we bought this, is because it can charge off of solar. The Solix F2000 is capable of up to 1,000 watts of PV input, and you can do it on a smaller rig a lot of ways. You don't have to use a big panel. You can use the Anchor branded flexible panels. This is a 200 watt module that you can mount on the roof of your vehicle, and it connects simply using included XT60 connectors right into the back of the panel like this, and it'll plug into the back of your Solix F2000. You can also use third-party solar panels, and we're gonna go over that next, what you wanna look for when you're selecting a third-party solar panel that will work well with your Solix F2000. But if you go that route, one thing you will need to purchase is this, and it's an adapter that gives you MC4 connections on the back, which is the standard plug that you'll find on the back of almost every solar panel. And on the other side, it gives you the XT60 connection that the Anchor Solix will accept on the back of this unit. This is a great thing. You can buy it lots of places and it saves you again from having to do any splicing or real electrical work. If you want to use a third party solar panel for your Anchor Solix F2000, there's a lot of options out there for you. And to do that, you want to make sure that you understand what the label on the back of these solar panels is telling you so you can pick the right one for the job. This unit here is a 400 watt solar panel, so we could do two of them and not be losing any power because our Anchor Solix F2000 can accept up to 1,000 watts of solar input. The Solix F2000 can only take up to 60 volts of incoming solar power, so we want to make sure that this panel won't exceed that. To determine that, we want to take a look at the open circuit voltage listed on this tag. It's listed as VOC, so voltage open circuit, and for this particular panel, it's 49.3 volts. That keeps us under the limit of the Solix F2000, but it still gives us tons of power so we can recharge this quickly without worry. 
Since the maximum input that the Solux F2000 can accept is 60 volts, it's important not to go over that. Because these panels are coming out at almost 50 volts, they're fine on their own. Now, what if we were running smaller panels, say panels that output only 20 volts each? Well, you could actually run those in series where you wire them positive to negative and the voltage adds up. And in fact, coming in at a higher voltage is gonna give you more charging capability with the Solux F2000. If you can come in over 32 volts, that will unlock an additional 10 amps of solar input charging and get you up to that 1000 watt mark. If you're coming in at below 32 volts, you'll only be able to get 10 amps of charging, which will be just over 300, 360 ish watts of power. So how you wire your panels in series versus parallel can potentially unlock more power coming into your Solix F2000. You can see how easy it is to incorporate the F2000 into a smaller build. You don't even have to splice wires or be an electrician to make it happen. Now I wanna talk about what happens if you've got a bigger project, one where you wanna have a larger solar array mounted up there, or maybe you've got multiple outlet boxes installed throughout the rig that you want this unit to power. Let's hop in this converted school bus I'm working on, and I'll show you how I'm gonna make this happen in my own rig. Since we're gonna be building this power station under the bed of this rig, being able to control it without having to crawl under the bed is really important. But Anchor makes it easy. You can simply use their app to control the output of this unit. Watch, I can even turn on the light if I want. But when the light's off, I can turn on the power to our 12 volt outlets here, and I can also turn the power to our AC outlets on and off. Power on, power off, power on, power off. Since we have the ability to turn our power on and off without getting to the unit itself, that means we can hide it under things like our bed without worrying. The next step is then taking power from our Solix F2000 and getting it into our AC distribution panel. And to do that, we will wanna use a 30 amp plug like this one. Anchor was nice enough to put a 30 amp plug on the front of us, which makes it easy to pull all of the available power out through just one simple connection. And all we have to do is splice this cable into our 30 amp plug end. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, now that we've got our plug end on, it's just as simple as plugging it in. And now we have power coming out of the Solix and into our main distribution box where we can then send it out to all of our circuits. Let's take a look at the DC side now. So we'll take the cover off of this fuse block and wiring the devices is really quite simple. We'll simply take our DC loads. This is all of them for this bus. On the ends, we'll splice our ring terminals on there and connect them each, the positive to a fuse side and the negative to the negative bus bar. We'll supply power to our DC fuse block using one of these adapters, and they're easy to find, readily available all over the internet. And it takes a 12 volt automotive style plug that you would plug into the output of your Solix F2000. And then you'll take your main positive and negative leads and connect them to the supply terminals on our fuse panel. Let's go ahead and get that connected. We'll take our ring terminals and we'll just crimp them on the loads to our vent fan today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on for my Bluetooth app. There we go. Oh, and you can hear my vent fan powering on. Whether it's powering your home, your shop, or your nomadic lifestyle, the Anchor Solix F2000 has all the features you need to keep you living in power. If you wanna integrate with the Anchor branded panels or third-party panels, it's got you covered. And if you need the extra energy, the expansion battery pack will make sure that you don't run out of juice anytime soon.